Hey everyone, I'm Chess Carter. I'm a part of the communications team here at Heights Church and I'm so excited to continue our thread, Followers versus Fans. Um, today's passage is gonna be in Matthew 7, one through six. I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna share some of the things that stood out to me and how we can apply this in our lives today. So it begins with this. Don't judge others and you will not be judged for you will be treated as you treat others the standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. And lastly, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls. Then they turn and attack you. Wow. This passage has so many different things that you can unpack and dissect. But the things that stood out to me are these. Firstly, love unconditionally. Secondly, remember the mercy and the compassion that Jesus has shown us. And lastly, be wise with how we engage with those who don't know Jesus. When we look back at verse 1 of chapter 7, and when it deals with don't judge in others, it is important for us to remember that judging sometimes has this tendency of separating one thing from another. In today's age, it's, re it's pretty much like the cancel culture that we're seeing now. If I see something in your life that I don't like or approve, you are not worthy to be in my presence. You are not worthy of my attention or my love. And that's counter of what unconditional love is. Unconditional love says you are worthy of love. Unconditional love says I am not higher than you. I am your neighbor. Unconditional love sees your mess, sees your sin, and says I am going to love you anyways. I'm not going to approve of what you're doing, and I'm not going to love the sin that you're doing. In fact, I'm going to hate the sin that you're doing. But I'm going to agree in prayer that what Jesus did for me, he can do for you. And you see, this leads me to uh, number two, which is remembering the mercy and the compassion that Jesus showed us. Because once we were sinners, and yet Jesus saw our sin, saw our imperfection, and he saw our mess, and he said, you know what? I'm gonna love you anyways. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna die on the cross for you because I love you and I know one day you will love me too. You see, that's great compassion. That is great mercy and that is unconditional love. And that's the same characteristics that God wants us to show others. Because little do we know when we judge others to the standard of perfection, we are too inwardly judging ourselves to that standard. And when we judge ourselves to that standard, it's hard for us to receive what Jesus has done for us on the cross, which is love us unconditionally, show us mercy, show us compassion, and reconcile us to the love of Jesus that changes the heart. And you see, love, mercy, and compassion also helps with the log issue. When we have this big log in our eye, you know, it's hard for us to see, it's hard for us to help others. And partially it's because we're not seeing at the perspective that Jesus is seen. So when we humble ourselves and we let God um, um, does this, do this work in our hearts and take out the seeds that aren't supposed to be there and plant seeds that are, then we're able to see in the perspective that Jesus has. And then we're able to love unconditionally. And then we're able to um, give mercy and compassion to our neighbors and we're able to help them. You see, all three of those things connect. And lastly, when it talks about um, not wasting what is holy on people who are unholy, I think that's just wise for those, for engaging with those who don't even know Jesus yet. I mean, why would we go talk to someone about all the deep secrets of the Bible and of Jesus when they don't even know who he is yet? <laughs> you know, they'll be really confused and oftentimes you see debates happening because you'll have some who are um, just against religion in general. So you have um, this fight going on that leads to nothing and you will get trampled on because they don't understand um, what you're saying and it will go over their heads. But what we can do when we engage with people who don't know Jesus 
is to display the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, kindness, selflessness, love. <laughs> you see, all those things we can still do. And, you know, to wrap up, I just think it's really cool um, and fascinating how God cares so much of how we interact with each other. What I saw in this, in this passage is, is just Jesus saying, love your neighbor. And I think that's something that we can carry with us in our day.